little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So, anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, mm. it would have been better for you to have a large milestone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world? Because it tends people to sin. Temptations are inevitable. But what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eyes causes you to sin, gorge it out and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have both eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my Heavenly Father. Verse 12 Parable of the Lost Sheep If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Would he leave the ninety-nine others on the hills, and go out to search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth. He will rejoice over it more than over the ninety-nine that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Verse 15. Correcting another believer. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are on if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your, take your case to the church. Then, if he or she won't accept the church decision, treat that person as a pagan or a poor tax collector. I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth, concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Verse 21 Parable of the Unforgiving Debtor Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Not no, not seven times, Jesus replied, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven 
can be compared to a king who decided to bring his account up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owned him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. So his masters ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owned him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the truth and demanded his stand payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant? just as I have mentioned on you. Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. Brothers and sisters, we are teaching a very crucial lesson today. You know, the psychology said the reason we are having so much problem in the world is because of unforgiveness. Because it might be when we refuse to forgive, like somebody taking cyanide, little by little. I took my wife to the hospital one day. When I got there, the guy said, We're going to do allergy test. And I said, What test are we going to do? He said when well, he brought so many of these different chemicals, he said we're well, going to test it on her. I said really? He said yeah. I said why? She wants to lift his energy to it. I said well, it's very easy to also test it. I said we can test if it's allergic to cyanide. The man said what? He said please just go. <laughs> I said no no. <laughs> we want to do a test. All these chemicals you want to put them on your body. <laughs> you are going to poison that person. And will be allergic to all those things. That's how it is with people when they are doing when they are committing unforgiveness. This thing is very bitter in your heart, but it's eating you. It's eating like cancer. So if you don't forgive, it's a serious offense. Today we are looking at Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 35. Our topic is Jesus teaches on the importance of forgiveness and avoiding sins. Implication for modern day Christian. Let us bring that Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 35, verse by verse, and then explore its implications for modern day Christian. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 4, analysis. Jesus teaches the disciples about greatness in the kingdom of heaven by emphasizing humility. He used a child as an example, highlighting it. Innocency, humility, and dependence that characterize a child's nature. You know, what I like about Jesus, and I also love Jesus' disciples so much. Jesus teaches the public, great arena. Thousands of people will gather to hear Jesus teaching. He was the new prophet of Sheriff in town. Everybody want to go there. They are not just actually going there to know about what Jesus was teaching about, they are looking for miracles. Just like today, 
if I'm moving from church to church, looking for miracle. But when they finish teaching, because of their concern, they are, they are juggling for position. You know, we love position. When people have power, that's when you know what is their heart. Give power and money to somebody. That's what I tell my wife every day. I say, you never know what is somebody's heart. Give them money and just step back and watch them. You will see that man or woman will start displaying what is in their heart. They will start buying things, looking at it, and they're like little kids. I like to watch people. And they think they have money, but they are spending like tomorrow belong to them. But they don't actually have the money, they are poor, they are rich. But you that don't spend money, they say, oh, you are poor. I look at them and laugh. So Jesus' disciples were very critical. They have a concern. Say, Jesus, we have a concern. You are going to be a king. You are building a kingdom. Who is going to be the, who is the greatest among us? <laughs> Jesus said, you guys are worried about things that are not important. The essential thing, you left it. They said, please tell us. Of course, their mother came to ask Jesus, I want my son to be on the right hand side, they want to be on the left hand side. Jesus said, listen, the power to give position to somebody, that's only my power. It belongs to God. So after that one, Jesus said, let me teach you who is the greatest. You know, we are all supposed to be servants. They call it servant leadership. As a, as a leader, you are not the boss. You are supposed to be the, to be the servant. But Jesus disciples were journey for power, authority, or position. Like politicians of today. When the politician is running for office, this politician will be very humble. We will be shaking everybody's hand, we will be begging, we will be kneeling down, going from place to place. But once elected, he now becomes your king. He's no more your servant. I will listen to Nigerian news. Kogi State, you know, the richest state in Nigeria. Almost at the bottom of the ladder. In education, in rules, in everything. But their governor stole billions that was meant to develop his own state. Because he now believed that before he was elected, he was a rich poor man from one of those uh, remote villages, God forsaken village. Now he became governor, he started stealing the money. That's what is in people's heart. Watch them. See a woman will be a good Christian. Oh God, you are my father. Oh. Jesus, you are my Lord. Give them, a, give them a little bit of money. You will not see this person. I know a woman here used to go to my house. He said, I don't like to dress for you. This dress now worldly. I don't believe in worldliness. I said, sister, I said, yeah. They don't believe in it. They this a long hair tie. They call it Gilly Nigeria. And this one, they are worldly. Guess what? God started blessing the children. And one of the sons started the church. Guess what? Okay. If, you, if you see this woman now, okay. ah, this woman will dress. He said, God bless you. You must dress well to glorify God. Ha, 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 I said, welcome to America. Very good. God has blessed you now. That time, God did not bless you. We were condemning people who dress gorgeously. Yes. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful that we're not juggling for position. We're not going to church because we want to receive blood money. We want to buy a big house. We want to buy a big house. One day, we're going to leave everything behind. The greatest one is to do Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ said, you have to humble yourself. You have to depend on them. Look at the child now. If a child is behave, just slap the child or, or uh, beat the child at the bottom. I say, stop that, don't do that one. I said, say, chum here. Uh, the uh, child, don't give me water. I say, yes, yeah, mommy, yes, daddy, I'm going to give you water. He just forgot that they slapped him or her. That's what I was supposed to be. But as, as an adult, we hold grudges, we hold malice. And why would, I, why would I talk to him? You know what he said about me? You know what he did about me? Jesus said, no, we cannot do that one. So verses 5 to 6, Jesus emphasized the importance of caring for and not causing harm to those who are vulnerable or spiritually immature. He uses a strong, he, he, he issued a strong warning against causing others to stumble in their faith. You know, it's very easy to offend people. 
A lot of people will suffer in the church because of what one person did to them when they are young. Jesus said, if you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, great judgment await that person. And they use such a harsh word that it would have been better in my soul. You know, that's a small a, a, a piece of rock. You tie it around that person's waist or neck and drop it at the bottom of the sea. And I want to find out why. You know, the human body does not flow. Your, your body cannot flow. If you, if you drop inside the water now, you come to the top of the water. The human body does not sink. The, the, the human body does not sink, yeah. It will come to the top of the water. But God, so when you put this, when you put a stone on somebody's neck, then it will, it will go to the bottom of the sea. So Jesus Christ was using that. So 7 to 9, Jesus uses hyperbolic language to emphasize the seriousness of sin and its consequences. It is that it is better to eliminate anything in our lives that leads us to sin. If it, it has if it is as precious as an or an eyes rather than a large sin to lead us to destruction. That's what I said. This is what is about home. But when, when we talk of death, we're not talking of spiritual, we're not talking of physical death. We're talking of spiritual death. Every one of us is going to die. But if you don't know Christ, you are separated from God forever. You person will go to hellfire. Although hellfire is not common today, when you are preaching about hellfire, I don't, God forbid, it's not my passion. God forbid, not me. I will never go to hellfire. It's not what you say that makes you to go to hellfire, it's what you do. And from your heart, your heart, how is your heart? We commit sin from our heart. When I see some young girl dressed, I don't see what are they looking for. It's from their heart. You, they may, you may look at them, they're innocent, but they're not innocent. They know what they're looking for. And you, that's a vulnerable man, weak minded, immature, when you see their physical body, according to Dr. Charles Apoke, they started shaking their nuclear, those are two, those are two nuclear heads, shooting out in their chest. They say, wow. And you see their back here. Begin to shake it and say, wow. And if you are vulnerable, and because you are weak in, in your nature, you want to be attracted by that, then you go to hellfire. That's why, as a Christian, I want to be very careful. Implication for modern day Christian. Christians should be, should not, should, should, Christians should take sin seriously and be willing to make drastic changes in their life to avoid it. This may involve removing sinful habits, relationship, or influences that, that may lead them away from God. Are you doing are you doing business but you know you are cheating? Are you doing business but you know you are being, you are doing corrupt you are doing corrupt corrupt things? As a young woman, you know what you are doing is bad. As as a man, you know what you are doing is bad. Where well, God, I mean, I'm weak. That's about my weakness permit me. Don't even go there, please. God does not preach to be weak. You make yourself to be weak because you want to commit sin. Devil tempted me. I said, which devil? And I passed it to the devil. I said, we give power to the devil that devil, devil does not have. So, if you remember the blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed us, you will live like an angel in this day without committing sin. I don't mean bad angels, I mean good angels. I don't want to go, I don't want to, I will teach about bad angels another day. Angels were in heaven. They were created. And one of these angels was playing music. He was head of choir. He now said from his heart, he said, I want to be like God. I want to take the position of God. That's his pride. And that will lead to his downfall today. Being caricature. Another angel said, oh, we want to be like this bad angel. And they follow him. And they are all in the hellfire today now. And they will go to hellfire. And at the end of the day, they are going to be destroyed. And the people that follow them, and they are leading people to hellfire. The road is very wide. Everybody is trooping there. Because of what you are going to eat, what you are going to wear, what you are going to drive, what you are going to put on your body. Ah, I see waiting. This life is not our home. And I tell you, if this position are still in billion, 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 if they know that they are going to die, shame 
son was talking uh, during the week. He said, if somebody stole 88 billion, he said, one billion is one million times one million. That's one billion. And he started saying, this person, that one billion, if you are spending one million a day, you would have lived for so many years. And he said, about, about 200 and something years. To say 88 billion, times it by that number, he said, the person would have lived forever. You would never have to be spending that money. He said, but this person knows that he's going to die tomorrow. But he's depriving the poor people. I'm about to go to school, I'm about to have hospital, I'm about to have gurus. He said, that's how corrupt they are. They are not saying, ah, I need to like, oh, you talk. Keep your mouth shut. He said, I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. We are depriving ourselves and blaming somebody else. Are you the people that are stealing government money? Are you the people that are sinning? Are you the people that are doing party? He just said, well, I'm a businessman. He said, you are all thieves. He said, the man sent somebody to me. Because I told him I was going to speak on this thing. He said, they were telling me, ah, be, be gentle. Be gentle. You shouldn't talk too much. He said, I'm going to say what I have to say. I'm nobody's boy. Are you committing sin? Are you stealing? Are you cheating? Are you lying? How are you, how are you using your body? Are you used to bless the Lord? May God help us in Jesus' name. Implication, in Jesus, verses 10 to 14. Jesus illustrates God's concern for every individual, especially those who are vulnerable or lost. He emphasizes the value of each person in God's sight and is there for their salvation. God wants everyone of us to say, God doesn't want anybody to go to hellfire. That's why he sends to let the son to redeem us. But going to hellfire is a personal choice. I want to tell you, oh, all these pastors are stealing, all these pastors are chasing. Being a pastor is one of the hardest job. It's a touchless job. For a genuine pastor, I'm not talking about this, a 419 pastor, who thinks this world is their home. Touchless is one, it's a touchless job. I talk about Bishop, where they have known him for so many years. He has been involved in the ministry for years. It's a touchless job. And if you want to be corrupt, also you would have been corrupt. For that reason, it's a choice you make without to be corrupt. You never know what is in somebody's heart. I say it every day. Give them money. Just sit back and watch them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Implication for modern Christians. Modern Christians should share God's compassion for the lost and actively seeking to bring them back into a relationship with God. This may involve reaching out to those who have strayed from faith, offering them love, support, and guidance back to the fold. As a pastor, I see that I call people all the time. I want to visit them. You know, being the pastor of the church is one of the hardest. When I was pastor in church, I used to want to visit all the members in their home. But well, we can go through we'll so many places. I still try to call people today, even with this online. How are you doing? How is everything with you? Because one day we are going to stand before God. He's going to say, How did you live your life? The resources I give to you, how do you, but you're going to leave everything behind here. And you're going to stand before God empty, naked, and with nothing. You say, What? Why is that deceiving myself? That's why we're making the effort to teach. I tell my wife, I say, Try to write this passage, try to look for what to say, read this passage over and over, over and over. It's not easy. You should try it. You try it. Just sit and say, well, I'm going to take Matthew chapter 19, which is next week part. Chapter. Try to read it and try to write on it and see how many will take you. You I just say, ah, I thought that. Somebody asked me, one of the pastors asked me, say, Pastor, which book are you using? I said, I don't have no book. He said, I need this passage you are teaching. Which book are you using to? to? He said, because I want to be using that book too. I said, I have no book. I just sit and start writing. Although I use so many tools today to write. We are living in modern technology. If you know how to use computer, computer can assist you in so many ways. But to put these words together, it's so easy. I was uh, late yesterday, I usually get my message during the week. But I was, I was up until almost 12 midnight this morning, writing this passage. 
and reading and writing and reading and writing. So it's not easy. But you can do it too. God is looking for every one of us to be in the ministry. As I always say, if you cannot write, you can give money. If you cannot give money, you can pray. If you cannot pray, you can encourage somebody else. There are so many things we can do on behalf of God as children of God. Jesus provided a process for handling conflict and addressing sin within the Christian community. He emphasized the importance of seeking reconciliation and restoration, starting with private confrontation and escalating if necessary. Jesus tells us how to handle conflict. We first of all go there, brother or sister or boss, this is what you do or say that I'm not happy with. But if the person refuses to listen, you escalate it to the next level. So then, if the person refuses to listen, Jesus gives us what to do. Implication, modern day Christians should approach conflict, resolution, and accountability within the church with love, humility, and commitment to restoration. This involves addressing sin and reconciliation in the spirit of grace and unity with the goal of preserving the health and welfare of the Christian community. You know, as a church, we are, we are about to offend each other. Why? Right? Because of the way I'm eating, the way I'm talking, the way I'm dressing, the way I look. But if you feel offended, call the person and say, Brother, you see that word you say, I'm not happy. Although some people do write to me and say, Pastor, that's your teaching. I didn't like it. You are talking about me. I say, God forbid that I should talk about you. I am in America. You are in Nigeria. How can I talk about you? I don't even know you. You are, you are not even a teacher. I say, but let me tell you, if what we are teaching touch you, I'm not the one that is talking. Holy Spirit is talking through me. Why don't you ask God to forgive me? You say, oh, you, you are talking about me. I say, my brother, you have a right to listen. You have a right to delete it. You have a right not to listen. The choice is yours. But you are going to be accountable to God at the end of the day. You are going to stand before God one day and God is going to judge you. If you think this word is hard now, when you be say, I don't lose you, when God will say, I don't lose you, that will be harder. I say, all I'm talking about is about sin, about corruption, about people stealing Nigerian government money. I emphasize it, creating poverty for our people. You think what I'm saying is hard now? I say, brother, harder things are there. If you guys think you are rich because you are stealing government money, greater damnation is coming. Oh, you don't, you don't, I don't want to listen to you. I say, you don't have to listen. I don't, you don't pay me, neither do I pay you for listening. It's a choice. But God is going to judge. Is the word of God too hard for you to handle? You know, Americans call it hot potato. When it is too hard, it's, ah, I can't handle this thing. If you cannot handle it, you are not doing it for me. You are doing it for yourself. And God is going to judge you based on what you have done. That's why I have to be very careful. Go look at our heart. Is your heart pure? Is your heart okay? That's what God look at. I was teaching during the past uh, couple of days. I was saying, God does not look at our physical body. God doesn't see your makeup. God doesn't see your, what you wear. God is, if you are a woman, God does not see your two nuclear. God doesn't look at that one. God does not even see your physical body. He looks at your heart. Is your heart right? If your heart is not right, every other thing you are doing is of no value to God. That must be very careful what you do. Because I was in Jesus' name. Verses 21 to 10, 33. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle account with his servant. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of dollars was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. They call it a debt prison. 
You used to happen in this country and in England. She cannot pay. They sell you as a slave. That's how slavery started. At, at, at this time, I fell off his feet, on this day before him, a patient was being repaired. And I paid back everything. The, the masters, the servant master took pity on him and canceled the entire debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Just imagine it. Begin to choke him. Ah, I'll kill you today. I'll kill you. You are going to die today. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Today you must die. You must die because you refuse to pay me. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, I'll pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had, and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servant saw it, he said, ah, what has happened? They were afraid and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in, you wicked. He said, I cancel all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he could pay, until he should pay back all he owned. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. From your heart. You know if you want to know somebody who is powerful, give them a supervisor position. Just make them a supervisor. Ah! The man will be shouting on you, bullying you. In America here, you know what they do in corporation? They look for a man who is a squeegee, who is a fool. They make him a supervisor. That man cannot reason on his own. They will tell him, back, 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 back on your fellow African brothers and sisters. Back on them. The man will be back. Whoa, whoa, bye, 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 bye. I say, wait, what do you carry? What are you doing? Who do you think you are? Ah, pastor, don't talk to me that way. I say, if I talk to you, what are you going to do to me? Oh, you talk right now, I will bite your head off. Why are you shouting your fellow brothers and sisters? You are, somebody is telling you to do something. Can't you use your brain to do I can't do that thing. If somebody say, go and beat that man, you are just going to beat him because they have given you a small little position. But when they look at you, you are smart, you are able to say, no, this is my fellow human being. I can't treat them like this. They will not want to give you that position. They will not say, oh, it's a poor opportunity. No, it's black people that is fighting black people. Black people are the one that is fighting themselves. So this master was, was, was setting his account. In fact, this guy owed so much money. He, he said, come and pay my money. The man said, I cannot pay. He said, okay, if you cannot pay, what am I going to do? I'm going to put you in prison. With you and your wife, I go, oh, please, sir, go have mercy upon me. It's Nigeria. Said, Baba, me, please, shano me, have mercy upon me. Baba, shano me, have mercy upon me. I beg you, forgive me. Forgive me. Just have mercy. The man was just begging. The man said, look at me. He said, don't worry, you are forgiving. Ah, the man looked, hey, you are owing me one dollar. Ah, ma, I will kill you today. I must kill you if you don't pay me. He dragged him out by the neck. I'm just a dramatic, dramatic in a Nigeria way. And the man said, I beg you, sir. I beg you, sir. Daddy, me, my mommy, my daddy, please forgive me. I will pay you, daddy. Mommy, I'll pay you. He said, ah, no, no, pay me now today. Pay me today. If you don't pay me, you're going to die. He was choking him. Yeah, he was begging. Your wife, I will kill all of you, your children. The man said, please, oh God, I beg you. Please, master, forgive me. I'll pay you. He said, no, pay me now. Pay me now. You can't pay me. You are going to die. Today you must die. Ah, the man was just begging. The man was crying. The man threw him to a prison. Other people look at me. Ah, ah, that's not good. Ah, that is not good. Why, man? Why? Why are you treating me? They went to the master. Oh, the master said, oh, no, we, are, we are very sorrowful. He said, why are you sorrowful? He said, Oh God, if you see what happened, he said, What is that? You see that our, our fellow man, our fellow servant, if you see the way treated our servant, ah, I didn't like it. What happened? 
Master, I don't want to tell you. Tell me now. Uh, Rama has been committed to prison. For what? For who this man one dollar. I forgive you one million dollar. Go and call him for me. So I'm going to put him to prison. If you want to know what is the people's heart, give him a small position. Give him a small money. They will start looking at you down like they are decorated or decorated themselves. So let us go on. Jesus said, that is how it's going to be if you don't forgive. This verse comes from the parable of the unforgiving servant, where Jesus illustrates the importance of forgiveness. The Lord in this passage represents God, and the servant who owns a debt represents us, humans, who own a debt of sin to God. This servant debt was forgiven by his master, symbolizing God's forgiveness of our sin through Jesus Christ. When Christ died on the cross, all of our sin was cancelled. He owned that debt, he, he paid that debt, he did not owe, I own that debt, I could not pay. The Lord Jesus paid all my sin for me. Now I can rejoice. Lord, have mercy on me. Are you forgiving? You know, I was watching Nigerian news. This woman just slapped this guy. Bam! 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 You know, with this uh, video, not everybody has camera everywhere. He said, why? He said, you are talking to me like that. Who are you? Who are you? Because this person now is a servant to this supposed called madame. Everybody said, ah, that's not good. Because this person, they are from poor who? This one, I think, is strange now. The whole nation, I said, no, no, we can't treat people like that. I said, thank God for camera. You know, people, for somebody to know what is in your heart, how do you treat somebody who is less than you? How do you treat them? That's to show what is in your heart. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, implication for modern day Christian. This verse underscores the seriousness of forgiveness in the Christian life. Just as God has forgiven us of our sin, we are called to forgive others. We are called to forgive others. Failure to forgive others can have severe consequences. Jesus implied that if we refuse to forgive, we risk experiencing the consequences of our own unforgiveness. The tormentor in this verse symbolizes the spiritual consequences of harboring unforgiveness, such as bitterness, resentment, a fracture relationship with God. Modern day Christians are reminded that forgiveness is not an optional but essential for spiritual health and growth. It is a commandment and a reflection of the grace we have received from God. It is a, a grace we receive from God. It's your heart, right? How do you feel about some people? Oh, I'm not going to talk to that man. I'm not going to talk to that woman. Brothers and sisters, you are carrying cyanide, poison in your system. And I can tell you the consequences of those things. They lead to cancer of the breast, cancer of the uterus. They lead to so many other cancer of the body. And if you don't have a joyful heart, that's why a lot of people are sick today and they are dying. Even though they may look rich, but medical procedure cannot help them because unforgiveness is a poison, a poison that can destroy human life. And we pray, say God, give us the grace. Forgiveness is very hard. You think what you have done to people, your kindness you have shown to them, the love you have shown to them, the prayer you have offered to them, the counsel you have given, everything you have done. And those people are now abusing you. You say, ah, why? I will never talk to this person. Not again in my life. Then you are carrying poison pill. Explosive poison that can destroy your body. But you must say, God, I forgive. If you can forgive me, I forgive this brother, I forgive this sister. I love them from the bottom of my heart. 
I say, Pastor, sometimes I feel pain. How some people treated me. But I say, God, I forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. I genuinely love people from the bottom of my heart. If I meet somebody, I love them from the bottom of my heart. But other people like that, some people want to use you as a pastor. That's why some of these pastors say, well, you want to come to me, I have to, because you have to be paid. You have, you have to pay for me to pray for you. But that shouldn't be like that. Well, some people, some people when they, they are pastors, they have to eat. That's what I always tell say, if I was under the tree, this ministry is very expensive to run. Even this is a small one. We don't solicit for fun. Everything costs money. But do you ever ask, sit and say, this message this guy is preaching, does he minister to you? And if he minister to you, do you ask yourself, what can I do to help this man? How can I contribute? How can I show my appreciation? Oh no. I'm not asking you to give. If you just say, Pastor, thank you for your teaching. Pastor, you have my prayer. Pastor, I love you. Pastor, I love that message. There's a lady from Nigeria. She writes to me every way. Pastor, I like your teaching. I ask God to bless you, to give you more grace. Pastor, I want, to, I want to thank you. God is calling all of us to show appreciation to her. Do you show appreciation to God also? May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The end of as the conclusion of the, of the parable, where Jesus directly applied, where, this, where Jesus directly applied his message to his disciples and by extension to all believers. Jesus emphasized, just as the master punished the unforgiving servant, so will God punish those who refuse to forgive others from their hearts. Implication of modern this reason, this man emphasized the seriousness of forgiveness in Christian community. Jesus teaches that forgiveness should come from the heart, not just outwardly. I want me to forgive you, I forgive you, but I'm still going to punish you. You, you will suffer. I, but I, I say I forgive you, but you don't forgive the person. <laughs> Christians are called to extend forgiveness to others regardless of the magnitude of the offense. Just as God has forgiven us of all our sins. Failure to forgive not only has relationship with others, but also it jeopardizes one relationship with God. Unforgiveness hinders spiritual growth and intimacy with God because God can never see your heart and because it's your heart that God looks at. Your heart will be clothed, it will be clouded before God because of unforgiveness. Modern ladies are challenged to examine their heart and attitude towards forgiveness. It is not enough to barely say we forgive, but it must be genuine and from the depth of our heart. In summary, Matthew chapter 18 emphasized the importance of forgiveness in the Christian life and warns of the consequences of unforgiving. Modern day Christians are called to forgive others from the heart, reflecting the grace and mercy they have received from God. Failure to forgive can lead to spiritual consequences and hinder one relationship with God and others. Invitation to accept Christ, who is a master of how to forgive. I want to extend an invitation to you, one that has transformed Catholic lives. An invitation to embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus offers us love, forgiveness. Again, Jesus Christ offers us love and forgiveness. We need to imitate Christ. Purpose beyond measure. Even on the cross where he was being beaten, spat upon, being caused, being abused, he said, Father, brothers and sisters, think about it. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. I said, no way, they know what they are doing, God, you must punish them. <laughs> ah, no way, I said, Pastor, this people have abused me, God, you must punish them. I'm your soul, you must send fire from heaven, like Elijah. Jesus said, no, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. We need to embrace Christ. He stands at the door of your heart, ready to enter your life and bring you peace, hope, and eternal life. You want peace and hope, I want joy, I want eternal life, let you forgive. I know forgiveness is very hard. Me talking to you, it's not easy for me. And because I'm teaching this one, doesn't mean, ah, this man is perfect too. 
God forbid. Far from it. I struggle with forgiveness. I said, I'm not going to talk to that person. No way. They think I'm a fool. Ah, no way. I'm not going to call them. But I see myself calling again. I see myself praying again. I said, God, forgive me. Will you consider taking this step? It's a chance to experience freedom from the burdens of sin. Find solace in this law and then back on a journey of profound spiritual growth and fulfillment that offer eternal life and opportunity to live with Him forever. If this was a little to do, or if you want to have, if you, if you want to receive Christ, if you have any question, I'm here to talk and support you in any way I can. Your spiritual journey is unique and respected. Wherever you may be along the way, Jesus Christ's resurrection is the key to eternal life. Open your heart in this amazing period to let Christ change your life forever. With much love. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ talk about whatever we burn on earth is burned in heaven. That's why every now and then I see the Holy Spirit together as a community. Jesus Christ said, Where two or three are there to, together? In my name, I've been your midst. Today, God is in our midst. You may say, Ah, I'm in Nigeria. Brother King is in England. His house is in far eastern part of Nigeria. How can God hear us? Brother Matthew is in California. Dr. Fina is in Washington, D.C. Bishop is in Houston. And uh, Sister Lucy is in, uh, is in part of this thing. Sister Deborah is in part of Tessa. And Brother Valentine, there are so many people on the line. We are all from different places here. But how can I go? We are not together. We are together in spirit. What do I say? We are together in spirit. And when we pray as one community, that's why every, every Sunday I always say, you, want, you have something you want us to pray for? And I was spoken request. God says, my, I don't want to mention my prayer to request to nobody. So may God help us in Jesus' name. When we pray together, there's, there's, a, there's a synergy, there's a great power that can break every yoke. That's why the Bible encourages us to pray together and to pray for each other. Whatever we are doing is not by me. And Bishop is on the line who we say is our father in the Lord, not who we say who is our father in the Lord. And if he can humble himself to say, let us pray, we all should, we, we all should say yes. Bishop is here to pray for us. And that is the highest title in the church today, Bishop. You can help us with that name. Come walk with us, Lord. We cannot walk alone. The road is rough. There are many dangers. Come walk with us, Lord. For we know you will see us through. Love, 
kindness. It's very hard to forgive. I have to, I have to admit it. It is very, very hard to forgive. When you see what somebody has done to you, how they have abused you, how they have sinned against you, how they have talked down you, how they have bypassed against you, how they have done something. You say, well, no, I'm not going to forgive them. But Jesus said, forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you are literally poisoning yourself. And you want to be free of all these diseases, all these sins, then ask God to forgive us. Amen. We are going to pray today. And uh, we are, all of us are going to pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness and Thank you, Lord, for Thank you, Father, for your protection, for your guidance, for your provision. Father in heaven, we know we have been in very hard times, but it has been because we to preserve us. We sleep and we wake up, we go out and we come. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day of Bible study and an hour with you. We thank you, O Lord, for all the lessons you teach us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Father, my God, we pray you teach us forgiveness. Many times we find it difficult to forgive our neighbors, we find it difficult to forgive our friends, we forgive, find it difficult even for our, our own people, our family, because we have been wronged. Because we have been offended. Yes. Oh, Father, we are praying that you teach us, O oh God, to forgive, not yes. to count the wrongs people have done to us. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the past you used to bless our souls and we will speak. Father, we pray that you, as you are using him to teach us, Father, we pray that you replenish him, that you teach him also in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, teach us to learn. Our Father in heaven, we are praying that you, as you use him, O oh God, that, that to be a blessing to people, bless him in turn. Amen. Bless his family, bless his wife, bless his children. Let them be examples of the believers. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for in this community. Everyone we attend on this platform, and all that hear this word through correspondence, through YouTube. Facebook, Father in heaven, as many as listen to this message, may they be ministered to in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that God bless you in your word. Father in heaven, we pray for every name that has been presented before you. Father in heaven, is anyone sick? Is anyone traveling? Does anybody have an exam to write? Father, even workers. Business people will commit into your hands. Yes, sir. Lord, that you meet them with their needs. Amen. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This weekend, pray that yes. we will be with the people, that we will fellowship with one another and before you. Yes. Thank you, Father, for your help. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is Elizabeth Bishop. Please go ahead and pray for our children because we're living in a very dangerous time. The heart of man and children are very wicked because of the deprivation of the society we are living in and the sin is rampant. It's a fact, we have to admit. And when I look at this generation, I say, God, what is going to happen after us? Will there be faith on earth? And will these children continue with the work we are giving to them? Wherever I go out, I look at the way people are dressing, the way they behave, I say, wow. The world is literally going to hellfire, and this is not the will of God. And these children are from family. Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Let the uh, uh, bishop wife well, pray for us, Sister Elizabeth, that God may forgive our children and give them a heart of forgiveness. For to first of all, forgiveness said to know they are human beings created in God's own image. They are not animals, they shouldn't behave like animals. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bless your 
wonderful opportunity of grace and hour with the Lord. Yes, Lord. We brought each and every soul together. We thank you for speaking to us through your son. We give you all the praise for the revelation which you are giving to us today. We take glory be to your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to go and leave all our children into your hands. Yes, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord praise the Lord. 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 Father, we hide our children in your name because your word says the name of the Lord is the strong tower. You say the right to turn it into a tower. Yes. Father, we come to you to do the last work that you please forgive all our sins, forgive the sins of our children. Father, we have sinned against you, be wet in thought. Yes. Knowing yes. and unknowing, they have sinned against you. Father, please, we plead the blood of Jesus today. Lord we thank Jesus. you for the faithful work on the cross of Calvary. Yes, Lord. On the cross of Calvary, we place it, we pray it is finished. Yes, Father, Lord. we pray for forgiveness and cleansing of our children. Yes, Lord. We have said that you will be them no more. Yes. But I thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Yes, Lord. So we never refer to you, God, until you accomplish it. Hallelujah, yes. Thank you, Lord. We want our children to do every day. Holy Spirit, we pray that you filter, filter the world. Yes, Lord. And Lord God Almighty, all this ego that are going around, that Lord God, they will not practice what they see or practice what they hear in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We hear your word and we bring them to your word. Yes. We commit your heart into your hand. That like your word will transform the heart of our children. Yes. That their mouth shall be like the mouth of a ready uh, writer. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our generations will come with commit it to your hand. That they shall be they shall be known as children of God. Yes, Lord. They shall be known of God. Mm-hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we will pray for the human. For so many children that have gone the wrong way today. Yes. Father, we pray God that Lord will work. Father, we prepare their heart to God. To receive you as their Lord and personal Savior. Yes, Lord. And they will willingly, they will willingly submit to your authority. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we let our children and we from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Yes, their body, their soul, and their spirit. Yes. Father, you wash them clean to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Deliver them from uh, friends. Deliver them from wrong associations. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My Father and my God will pray. That you order the steps of our children in righteousness. Yes, Lord. So whatever do they go, shall be safe for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever they, whatever they pray, shall be safe for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even when some sin comes in the internet, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We you bless your holy name today for your, for, your, for your goodness and mercy upon our children. Father, we so call our children in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Yes. And any tongue that shall rise against them is judged by law will condemn. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We can't talk and we can't go hand of death from their lives. Yes. Our children shall not die. They will live to declare your glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our Lord. generation shall be blessed. Yes, Lord. Praise the glory of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Oh, in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. 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 Dr. Oh. Fina in uh, Washington, go ahead and pray for our wives. A whole way husband and wife don't talk. They're like enemies. They, forg- they don't forgive. They don't forgive each other. Pray that God will make our home. Husband and wife at our home. They don't talk. They are just like cat and dog. Pray that peace will come home. As a pastor story I hear about Christian, husband and wife are like enemy at home. But they pretend to be Christian in the church. God, have mercy. Yes, Lord. Dr. Fina, go ahead and pray and say, God, have mercy. Give us a heart of forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Our Father, our King, we come to you once again, Father Lord. There was a reason a woman was created to be a helpmate unto the man, Father Lord. So we yes. said that the man, it wasn't good that he was alone. Yes. So the purpose, Father Lord, let the couple, Father Lord, let bring that purpose to reality, Father Lord, to every couple in this household, Father Lord, that they are supposed to be a helpmate to each other. They are supposed to be a teammate, Father Lord, that the, the wife is the neck and the, the man is the head, Father Lord. And without the neck, Father Lord, they the head cannot turn, Father Lord. So we think if they do not work together on the same purpose, if they are not on the same team, Father Lord, that there will not be unity, there will not be harmony, Father Lord. Father Lord, we are begging you today for harmony and peace in our homes, Father Lord. For that 
for that first law, for that reason they came together. Sure. Because every man and woman that come together, there was that period, there was that honeymoon where they have a, they, they have a joint purpose, a joint dream, a joint aspiration for the Lord. Bring that back to reality in their hopes in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, as they raise their children, Father Lord, let them know that the first purpose was them. They came together first. And so that they can work together because a home where there is no unity, we know what happened to the children, Father Lord. We know what happened to the peace. We know why men are dying more. You know, yes. There is no peace in a lot of homes. We know why people go to bed, they don't wake up. There is a reason, Father Lord. It's not the witch and wizard. It's the strength of home. It's the strength, it's the, it's the unity in the home. It's the, it's the, it's the strength that leads to different diseases, Father Lord. But God, Father Lord, you are our God. Yes. And Sister, Father Lord, you know, when we come to you, when we see what we find, we are seeking peace, we are seeking harmony, we are seeking love that we are bound in every home, Father Lord, that they will bring up our family, our children, in the way it's supposed to go, that we will we'll be pleasing unto you. King of King, Lord of Lord, we just, we ask for mercy. Because yes, we Lord. That this world right now is full of chaos, it's full of problems. There is bill to be paid, there is school, there is, I mean, there are so, so many distractions, Father Lord. But God, when you stand, when you are in the midst, there will be a peace, there will be purpose. We mm -hmm. pray for that peace and purpose in every home today, in this family, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I would ask Bishop to bless every one of us as a father in this group. That we present all our requests to God. And uh, we ask God to give us grace to truly be rich and have a heart of forgiveness. Forgiveness is very hard. I have to confess myself. It's one of the hardest things to do. It's easy to teach, but it's not easy to practicalize. <laughs> we would have to say, this, are, this is the children of God. I say, Father, say, Father, I bring all of them before you. That you give me a heart of forgiveness, a heart to love you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. And help it, yeah. partner, not, with your pure heart. 
Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. All that we need for, let it be pleasing to you. Yes, Lord. All that we seek after, let it be acceptable to you. Yes, Lord. All that we desire, let it be approved by you. Yes, Lord. All that we will long for, let it be according to your will. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. So, concerned the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We thank you for your servant that you have used to teach us today. Lord, Lord. Lord fill with more virtue and grace. Yes, Lord. That, Lord, in the days to come, in the years to come, we will be alive to do your will. Yes, Lord. We will be alive, O oh Lord, in accordance with your will, to yes. teach us and to teach humanity. Yes, Lord. That would be quite an acceptable. Help us, O oh Lord, we are prepared. Help us to miss it with faith. Yes, yes Lord. That the spirit of grace and the spirit of obedience be given unto us. Yes, Lord. That it will do us good all the days of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank for you, Lord. For every family here represented, for every home here represented, for every child, every children here represented, the so all in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. The days are evil, Father, the evil in the day shall not be our portion. Amen. Amen. In that, in the midst of darkness. Yes, Thank Lord. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is your will of God. For us. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Father, I bring Bishop before you and the family. He has served you and a witness for many, many years. It is by your grace, O Lord God of Israel, yes. that is continuing. Many have fallen along the way. Many have gone the erroneous way. He said, Demas has forsaken me after love, after loving the things of this world. But I will thank you, Lord, because he has not forsaken you. And he has not loved this world. He has prayed unto you, despite the hardship, the challenges. Father, by your grace, he has continued. Yes. Which is why I pray, God of Israel, as your representative, that the children will truly know you. Amen. That he will continue with this message you have given to him. So that his family shall be called the generation of God and God's people Amen. forever and unto eternal generation. Amen. That his day you fulfill. Yes. He will not die in poverty. Yes. He will not die in sickness. Yes. He will not die in disease yes. or in sorrow. Amen. The blessing I give it to him shall be extended, and the mantle I give it to him. Yes. May you give him worthy children who will carry on the mantle. Yes. Thy name of our God will be glorified in Jesus' name. As his children and as our Father will bring him before you as our Father. Yes. We say, Father, here is our Father in the Lord. Yes. Where that you bless him. Yes. And his house will let your great be reached towards him. Yes. Granting your favor, Lord God of Israel. Yes. For his humility, yes. for his love, for his forgiveness, for his genuine love. I mean, genuine love. Father, bless him. I make it a blessing. Every family represented here to the Lord, as he has said, we are all blessed. Amen. And we shall be blessed. Amen. And our sins are forgiven, and we receive the favor and the blessings of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and with man, and those who will come in contact with. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless every one of you. I appreciate you. This message was very challenging. I know we took a little bit of time to pray, to ask God for forgiveness. When I read it, I said, wow, this is tough, man. I went to America. America would say, man. <laughs> I said, this is tough. But we ask God to give us the grace to live for him. In Jesus' name.
Sister Uchi from Nigeria, God bless you. Brother King from England, God bless you. Brothers and sisters across America and around the world are here by way of social media. As the God of Israel, whom we have come to see, to bless us all and give us a heart of forgiveness and a heart of love. Indeed, in Jesus' name. Amen.